good afternoon good morning good evening everybody it is sunday september yeah september 24th and you know what that means it is time for the high risk wrestling recap covering the week that was you know how we do you know you can check me out on socials charismatic creations on facebook and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram and the two 15 on twitter and it's always coffee patreon donations are always welcome and accepted and without further ado let's get into the news cm punk will not be taking legal action against aw for his justified firing um he was fired with cause and they referring to aw had to rework some things but his termination is complete and that's that warner brothers discovery has announced that they will be adding live sports to max and it will come with an additional ten dollar per month fee and they'll be doing nhl nba ncaa and mlb but no announcement of AEW just yet i wholeheartedly expect them to be moving to max in some way shape or form a federal investigation uh, may force vince mcmahon to step down in his role from the wwe as he can be and is a liability to t k oh and they're to be into their partnership with panini uh they are a card trading card company uh for and they they say this is going on because of alleged an alleged brief of contract this decision comes despite panini having two years remaining on the contract darren Ravel reported on this uh earlier this week and panini's firing back they are uh following an order over WWE canceling their uh deal so keep keep your eyes and your ears onto this one has been announced that the elimination chamber will be taking place saturday february 24th 2024 in perth australia so you know what that means you know who the main event will feature none other than mommy herself Rhea ripley WWE has announced a new deal with nbc universal first things first smackdown starting in 2024 i believe in october of 2024 will be moving to the usa network and WWE will be giving nbc four prime time specials what they will be not so sure i'm probably going to assume saturday night's main event and of course smackdown's ratings will take a hit as you're moving from a free channel that has a wider audience to a cable channel that has a less audience so there to be needs to be prepared for that and tko took a hit in their stocks following the move of the smack down announcement shares went from 100 uh, a share to about 85 a share aew sounds like they will be signing japanese standouts she's not japanese but mariah may who's been working very hard on indies i know of mariah ray she's a really really good talent and will uh do very very well in aw given the right uh push sadly this week knowing that we had the merger going through there to be released a bunch of wrestlers so from the uh performance center brooklyn barlow alexis gray daniel mcarthur and kevin ventura cortez from nxt dabo kato quincy elliott ika manjiro and ulysia leon from the main roster Elias, shelton benjamin rick boogs dana brooke elias uh mace emma Mansoor, riddick maw shanky top dollar dolph ziggler dana brooke and mustafa ali and matt riddle now it sucks when people lose their jobs and some of these a lot of these things where people just just weren't being used on tv and it sucks that they got fired exception of dana brooke and uh, ali they were both regulars on nxt and ali actually had a pay-per-view match coming up so yeah it sucks um there are more people fired there were WWE firings in the office uh names like Catherine newton jamie horowitz uh, uh amanda bloom so yeah uh and a really really surprising name was dolph ziggler but I, I wholeheartedly expect him 
to be moving over to AEW to join his brother. I'm letting you know right now that uh, Dolph Ziggler's upcoming independent run, if he pursues one, will be nothing short of legendary. I'm, I'm just letting you all know. Be ready for that. TK wanted to cut reduce expenses, so they uh, cut away $100 million from everybody they got released from the main roster, from the rosters, and from the offices. Uh, on the injury uh, front, Randy Orton is back in the Performance Center training for an entering return. It's been over a year since he has been in a ring, and your boys got to go out on top. John Moxley suffered a mild concussion at Grand Slam, which was the reason why his match ended like that. Gail Kim also suffered a concussion after suffering a scary spot at Impact 1000. She also said she will not condone any bullying towards Velvet Sky. LA Knight has COVID. That's why he was pulled from SmackDown. On the rating side of things, Raw this past week pulled in 1.3 million viewers of the .44 on the 18 to 49 demo. Dynamite Grand Slam pulled in 984,000 viewers of the .36 in the 18 to 49 demo. SmackDown pulled in 2.1 million viewers with a .75 in the 18 to 49 demo. And Rampage pulled in 320 thousand viewers with a 0.14 the 18 to 49 demo i'm surprised that it was this low seeing how it was a loaded rampage but that is the news and we shall be right back all right so let's get into the week that was of course we start with Monday Night Raw and we see the rise of Jay Uso. Um, Cody starts the show because what's Monday Night Raw without either Cody or Sammy and KO or the Judgment Day <laughs> starting <laughs> Raw? When can Raw just start with a match? Oh my god. Um, Cody wants to discuss Jay. Dom interrupts. Cody defeats Dom. So tale is owed. As time. KO and Sammy stop the Judgment Day from attacking Cody. And after the Judgment Day leave, we come back from break. And Sammy just breaks everything down about Jay So he's caused all of us championship matches. And now y'all want me to trust him. Cody's KO's like, okay, listen. I don't trust Jay. I trust you too. So we'll see what happens. I like how KO's the only person that actually acknowledges history in the DDB. Uh, Eric is injured, so we instead of getting the tag match, the two out of three false tag match, I believe it was supposed to be. Kofi uh, takes on Ivar, and these two had a banger of a match. Like, we know what Kofi brings to the table, but Ivar pulled out some stuff. I'm like, okay, okay, this was, this, this was fun. I, I'd be fine if they ran it back or even uh, let Xavier and, and when Eric gets uh, healed up, they have a one on one match and let them put on a little Sun Sayami. Uh, Seth confronted Nakamura before Nakamura's match against Ricochet, but security and Adam Pearce stops him. Ricochet versus Nakamura ended in a DQ after Ricochet hit Nakamura with a chair. Uh, this makes Ricochet look stupid, even though Nakamura is going to do it first. Just go for the W. Nakamura beat up Ricochet until Seth showed up, but ultimately he fails and caught a back body drop onto the table. And Seth's back is just hurt. And he had to go to the trainer's room. Uh, Chelsea Green is awesome. Uh, she's, she's talk about how her and Piper are friends and not uh, how uh, Shane and Zoe aren't friends and Piper shows up she's like okay we're friends where am I from Chelsea says you're from the country of Florida and Piper just walks away then we get the tag match Piper and uh, Chelsea versus Shane and Zoe and it ends in a no contest of the night comes out and takes out everybody yep uh, Chad Cable won't receive another title shot. Bronson Reed steps in. And he wants next. And he uh, subsequently defeated Chad Gable. I like this is just a little side quest for Gable because I do think he's going to be the one to dethrone Gunther. Speaking of Gunther, Ciampa says he wants next. KO and Sammy tell Jay he has the choice to make about joining the Judgment because the Judgment also tell Jay that he's got a choice to make tonight. Um, Becky's open challenge is answered by Natalia and Becky wins. This was a solid match. It was originally supposed to be Tegan Knox answering the challenge, but the WWE wanted to uh, give Ch uh, give Natalia a little sign sign for stepping up during the Superstar Showdown, uh, Superstar Spectacular they had in India. 
Uh, Ciampa defeated Giovanni Vinci, and in the main event, Drew McIntyre defeated Jay Uso after he after Jay made his choice and won't be joining the Judgment Day. Cody ran down to make the save so the Judgment Day he won't beat up Jay. He ran right past Drew while Drew just stood on the ramp and looked on. Um, I'd be fine with a nice little Cody Drew feud to end the year. Over on Dynamite, we had grand slam and the show gets a thumbs up on the opening contest eddie kingston defeated his demons and ultimately defeated claudio castanoli to win the ring of honor world ch championships and they both adhere to the code of honor shaking hands afterwards so i'm happy that this is done um eddie's story is told and looks like the bcc are back to being faces we got next strong with roddy why is this man back in the hospital the kingdom was there <laughs> and Roddy wanted Adam go to stay, but Adam's like, yo, I gotta go be with MJF. This is hilarious. Yo, uh, Roddy and Tony are doing the best character work right now in AEW. Christian wants a three match for the TNT championship. He originally said handicap match. Jericho defeated Sammy and in a great callback to HBK and Jericho at WrestleMania 19, Sammy turned on Jericho and joins Don Callis's family. Callis also still wants Dan Garcia as part of the family. I don't think Garcia is going to join, actually. I don't think he's going to join. Um, Ray Phoenix defeated Moxley for the International Championship, and I'm assuming this wasn't supposed to happen, but Mox ended up getting a mild concussion, as we reported earlier, and uh, they call it an audible. So I'm fine with this. Uh, win or lose, Mox, go take that vacation, and I cannot wait to see the number of matches that Ray Phoenix puts on soraya retained the women's championship after defeating tony storm tony's all in on this new gimmick she's got she got a new entrance new music it's absolutely fantastic and in the main event mjf made his promise and he choked out samoa joe retaining the aew world championship and he choked him out with some uh some 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 tape and he hit it after the match and adam cole helped him so it's like, do you feel right with your face champion cheating? But it's also MGF, so it feels right. Over at Impact, we celebrated a thousand episodes again. Uh, this show gets a thumbs up. So in the opening contest, Alan Angels defeated Rich Swan, Samara Del Sol, uh, Zachary Wentz, Mike Bailey, and Ace Austin in a ultimate in an ultimate X match. It's the bread and butter of team, of Impact. You know what I mean? Jake Something defeated Dirty Dango. Rhino returns and gores Steve. Macklin. So we're, we're, we're building and building towards Bound for Glory. Uh, America's Most Wanted and Team Canada defeated Sheldon, Gene, Kenny King, Khan, and Dean. Yeah. Uh, this originally started out as Eric Young versus Kenny King. It ended in a DQ. Shark Boy came out and made it Eric Young and Scott D. Moore versus Kenny and Sheldon. That ended in a DQ. So then he just made the eight man tag. So give me a shell, yeah. Uh, the feast are fired. Cases are revealed. Moose gets a world title shot. Crazy Steve gets a digital media shot. Chris Bay gets a tag team title shot. And Yuyu Yamura is fired. I kind of predicted this a couple weeks ago when they announced the match. And he he got one of the briefcases. I was like, he's probably going to go back to Japan. And so this made sense. Josh Alexander defeated Trey Miguel after Alex Shelley stopped Zach Wentz from interfering. And Shelley tells Alexander, I did not... Don't get your single scrolls. I did not do this to help you. I did this to hurt the rascals. Um, and not to help you. So just be ready for a match at Bound for Glory. Bound for Glory is shaping up to be a really good card. The Good Hands won their tag team title shot in the main event to send the crowd home happy. Gail Kim, Awesome Kong, Jordan Grease, Mickey James, and Trinity defeated Deanna Peraza, Savannah Evans, Angelina Love. Giselle Shaw and Tasha Stills and just a celebration of the knockouts. This is how you treat women's wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. And Mickey still has her eyes on that championship. This was just a great, great show, man. A, a uh, uh, Impact. Impact just, just, they're consistently the best show. They're consistently the best and this was a great, great way to celebrate. Um, yeah, that's that's just 
That's just what we do. Over on SmackDown, Jimmy made his choice. Looks like he's really a part of the butt line. The show gets a fist. John Cena opened the show. He wants a fight, and he wants the bloodline. AJ comes out, offers to be his partner. Jimmy and Solo won't give them what they want, but Solo wants to fight and reluctantly backs down because Heyman gets the call from Roman. Uh, Adam Pearce tells Cena and AJ that it's complicated and that they'll need to speak with him. He'll need to speak with Heyman personally first to set this match up. Santos and Ray defeated the Street Profits after the Profits don't capitalize on uh, Lashley's help, and Lashley is pissed. So for weeks we tell them that the Prophet we're told that the Profits have a new attitude, but now we're falling down at backs just so we can build it up first. Okay. Okay, EO Sky retained the uh, WWE Women's Championship in a great match against Asuka. I can't believe this is the first time these two have fought in like 15 years. That's awesome. Uh, Pierce lets Jimmy and Solo know the tag match will happen at Fast Lane. They'll sign the contracts later. Solo says he'll make sure he doesn't get that far after Adam Pierce leaves. Pretty Deadly had a really funny segment. I can't do this segment justice. Just go and watch it. Uh, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller defeated the Brawling Brutes. And in the main event segment, Solo is un unhinged, takes out AJ backstage. He and Jimmy didn't destroy Cena in the ring, and they stand tall. Heyman's kind of beside himself. The timing was a little bit off for this segment, but because it feels like somebody was supposed to save Cena, and it was probably supposed to be LA Knight. Because remember, Paul Heyman said LA Knight is becoming a problem. Just letting that, letting that out there. Over on Rampage, we had Grand Slam Rampage. Sting and Darby Allen defeated Christian and Luchasaurus. So Sting is still undefeated in AEW. Uh, Orange Cassidy, Hook, and Chris Stalin defeated 2.0 and Anna J. Johnny TV, he'll be QT's partner when he returns from Mexico. Sammy Guevara is happy to be a part of a family now. And Jericho tries to attack Sammy and Takeshita, but the damn number of games catches up to him until Kenny Omega makes the save. And this is weird. Um, Kenny's like, I'm not here for you. I'm here for Callus. But if we got to team up, we got to team up. The Righteous defeats uh, the best friends, the Hardys, and the Kingdom to become the Ring of Honor number one contenders for the Tag Team Championships. Uh, the Acclaimed and Billy Gunn retained the Trio Champions over the Dark Order. Julia Hart defeated Sky Blue, and Willow uh, comes out to save Blue. We're giving this Julia Hart a push. I'm all for it. Uh, we got a Sam, Sam, sorry. Mike Santana, Squash and Ortiz wants answers. And in main event, the Hung Bucks defeated the Mobile Embassy to become the Ring of Honor Trios champions. I'm hoping the Bucks and Hangman end up on Ring of Honor just to get some more eyes on that product. Over on Collision, this show gets a uh, thumbs up as Ricky shines as Ricky because it's Ricky's show, you know what I mean? Christian wins the TNT Championship, finally becomes the TNT Champion, pinning Luchasaurus and three about, including this match included Darby Allin. Uh, this was just a way to get the championship on Christian. But Luchasaurus is a little bit dejected, so I'm looking for the turn to come at some point. Maybe at full gear. Uh, Don Collins says that it'll be his family of Takeshita, Will Ospreay, and Sammy Guevara versus Jericho, Omega, and Ibushi at Wrestle Dream. Wrestle Dream is shaping up to be a really solid card rvd and hook defeated 2.0 julia hart defeated kiera hogan she had missed the sky blue if the sky blue came out and then brody gets them like it says julia has 20 bodies and she won statlander at wrestle dream jay white defeated andrade in a great match saying taylor says he will put keith lee in the dirt to, pro to provide for his family ftr defeated the work horseman uh, retaining the tag team championships and Aussie Open says they got next at Wrestle Dream. CJ Perry's interview backstage and she says she just wanted to help her husband and, and he's worried about past uh, things. So he says he wants no temptation. He looks at her cleavage. He says, want no temptation for her. She says, okay, that's fine. Just don't touch any of my future clients. So we'll see where this goes. And Brian Danson defeated Ricky Starks in the main event in a Texas death match this was this was good yeah we had a great week of wrestling um i would probably say the low point was probably raw but even then that show wasn't bad but impact and AEW put on a very very fine week of shows our matches of the week from monday night raw kofi kingston versus ivar go check that one out because you'll 
I was shocked at how good it was. From Dynamite, uh, Soraya versus Tony Storm for the AEW Women's World Championship, and Samoa Joe versus uh, MJF for the AEW World Championship. Both fine, fine matches from Impact. Our main event celebrating the knockouts: Awesome Kong, Gail Kim, Mickey James, Trinity, and Jordan Grace versus Angelina Love, Giselle Shaw, Chasa, Tasha Steele, Savannah Evans, and Deanna Peraza from SmackDown. EO Sky versus Oscar. I would love to see them get 20 more minutes on a pay-per-view and wrestle like they're in the Tokyo Dome. You know, I love both these women. From Rampage, the Hung Bucks versus the Mogul Embassy for the Ring of Honor six-man tag team championships. And from Collision, Jay White versus Andrade El Idolo and Brian Danson versus Ricky Starks in a Texas death match. Our star of the week, I might have to give this to Eddie Kingston conquering his demons that's our show thank you for listening thank you for watching check me out on the socials charismatic creations on facebook and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram the 215 spelled out on twitter and always coffee and patreon for donations gonna start getting some more content up on the channel movie reviews tv reviews other things I'm excited for what's coming up next, y'all. Don't forget to check out the High Risk Wrestling Podcast every single Saturday, wherever you get your podcast from. And this Saturday show will be the Impact Wrestling Mount Rushmore. That's our show. Peace. Peace.